we're talking not only uh, to them, we're talking to their conscience, we're talking to their, to their psyche, we're talking to their spirit. When we put that type of vibration out there, I think we definitely become responsible for it. And I think when people say things, there's a universal law that makes it come right back to them. And even though they may have affected your children in a negative way, it also ultimately affects their own personal life in some type of a negative word. So words are power to me. Do you touch on that, man, for me, if you will, because you are noted for your hardcore lyrics. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, if you figure out that what they want to do is recite your lyrics. You know what I'm saying? You know that from the door. You know what I'm saying? I think the best thing you can do is just give them something good to say. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't, don't hit them with a bunch of blah, 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 and burr, 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 but you know, a bunch of bull, you know what I'm saying? Hit, hit, hit them with something right to think on, you know what I'm saying? So that way when they find out what it means, when they figure out what they're reciting, they're like, hmm, you know what I'm saying? It's cool for thought, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's two things in one, you know? Chris, pick up on that for me, if you will. That it is a debate, though, that, that goes on. It's age old, ever since gangster rap really has, has walked in the door, the idea that perhaps some of the good will get lost because people can't get beyond the lyrics. Well, let me, let me take this opportunity right now uh, and say that uh, DMX's album is brilliant. Uh, I don't, I mean, yeah, it could be a little hardcore, but, you know, maybe we got to rethink what is good and what is evil. Because I was, I mean, I put out an album called By, Any Means, uh, By All Means Necessary, and we were looked at as gangster rap in 1988 for defending Malcolm X. So th the one thing I look at is I bought my, uh, DMX's album for my son, and we listened to it one day going um, from one show to another. We were somewhere we popped in DMX. And DMX got crazy lyrics on his album about God, about his conversations with God. I think the album was balanced. And I think people basically that are critiquing us are what I would, be, or what I would call culturally illiterate. Uh, they really don't understand our language, our code, nothing. But yet they're comparing us to a moral and ethical system that we really don't have much to do with. It's like, you know, our morals and our ethics are, uh, are not being taken seriously. That's number one. But on this other level, if I may raise the, 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 the debate a little bit here, um, the only issue we really have is with our parents. Now, the other uh, day, about two or three days ago, on C-SPAN, uh, I was watching T. Dolores Talk a bash against the rap, uh, uh, as, as well as Dick Gregory, uh, as well as uh, a lot of people was up there on the panel patting her on the back for her bashing against the rap. And now here you have us here discussing what hip hop is doing uh, for the community. They didn't call none of us. They didn't call us to say anything, not, not even to debate, not, not even to defend ourselves. So the one thing I'd like say. to bring up is, mm -hmm. is, is our parents are the ones that are dissing us. The white corporate or, or whatever you want to call it, the powers that be, they don't even understand what we're saying. So, and, and our parents don't either, but our parents are the ones that are making this whole thing a big issue. They're the ones saying, oh, you need to be talking about this and you need to be talking about that. But nobody's talking about who sold us out in the 60s. Exactly. Well, I don't know. I, I have Just to... Let me uh, do this so I won't have to stop you midstream. Okay. Uh, quick break here when we come back you can pick everybody who knows me uh since the 80s i will come to an artist it doesn't matter who it is and i'll say look this is what you're doing and that's fly and you can say that you come from the projects but i come from the projects too but there is a standard for what we should be doing and all of us could be doing more i don't mind putting pressure on somebody and most of the artists that you see out there that do something uh good uh can tell you that they've had a conversation where I have exerted a certain amount of pressure to try to push something in a more positive direction. I don't think that all of our parents sold us out. I think in the 60s, a lot of our parents were active in trying to change the situations that go on. And there's an imbalance in the society now where the kids have more money than the parents, which means that the kids believe that they no longer have to speak to the parents because they believe that they're in control because they have the money. Uh, artists get on television all the time and say, all you had to do was call me. But those same artists know that if you call them, you would never hear from them. They would never call you back. They would never sit down. And in the conversation, they would never deal you a fair hand because they would just keep saying that they have all the money. And as long as they have the money, then anything that you say is not, not valid. As a woman, I have to say this. If you give birth to a child, then your whole life, if you're drug-free and alcohol-free, 
will be dedicated to protect the child that you gave birth to and to protect the children of other women. And so that's the reason why we're always talking about what we see that is wrong and trying to exert pressure to move it in another, in another direction. I think that a lot of the rappers have become too comfortable and uh, have, have been able to fool a lot of people into believing that there's a lot more going on than is actually going on. And I think that all of us need to talk and care. Rest one knows that um, I'm a person who has contacted him and tried to pull him up on certain things and say, yeah, you're doing all right, you're doing this, you're doing that. But you know that uh, uh, compared to what we need to be doing and compared to the crisis that we are confronted with, that all of us should be stepping up to the plate and, and doing a lot better. I feel you because I... I've been saying for like uh, the past four years about the way people in rap, uh, the people in hip hop now are just praising money and okay. making our kids, making our kids believe that if you don't have money, then you're nothing. Now I, I've been saying that for a long time, and nobody's really been nobody's been addressing that point. Now it's okay. It was okay when when it was original, and a, and a few people was talking about it because it was original. Now you got every damn near everybody in hip hop. Talking about the same thing, talking yeah. about having money, and it's making our it's making our kids believe that if you don't have money, then you have nothing, and so it makes them want to go out and do stupid well, things. Don't forget the cars. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Can I, can I can I can I add to that uh, and and just clarify that? Uh, no, I'm not saying all parents, not not all, uh, but I do have a problem with C. Dolores Tucker in particular uh, when she gets on television and tries to label all of hip-hop culture as this negative thing that's destroying our children. And also, just to add on what, what, what Coolio was saying, again, it's our parents, or some of them, that are the program directors of some of the most the biggest radio stations in the country. Now, I remember when we put out the Stop the Violence movement, we had to go through the same channels that any other commercial artist would have put out uh, 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 to get, his, get her, their music out. Um, to me, if you come with something conscious and you come with something positive, it doesn't get played on the air, it doesn't get on any video shows, and the people who are making these decisions are the same ones who will turn around and say, we're not doing nothing for the community. And we both know, KRS-One, that pressure is the only thing that changes something. So if we were really concerned about moving things in a more conscious direction, then we would be meeting not only on the TV screen, but we would be meeting behind closed doors to use the power that you have, that I have, that Chuck D has, that Lauren L has, that this beautiful brother has, that all these powerful young black people. We have more black millionaires today than we've ever had, and we really have no excuse. I think a lot of us are profiling. We get up on these award shows. We talk about God this, God that. You can't love God without respecting God's law, and God's law requires you to work and struggle against injustice, and the rap artists have become too comfortable, and I'm not saying compared to white people, because y'all know what I think about them. I'm saying compared to what we need to be doing as young, powerful, financial decision makers in this society with our kids in a state of crisis. Okay, well I'm just like you because I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit older than a lot of people think I am. And you know, I, I always try to talk to these young brothers, but let me tell you something about talking to a young black millionaire. They don't, they don't want to hear you if you're not talking about something that's going to put more money in their pocket or that's going to do something that's going to make them have some fun. I'll be trying to tell them all the time, we need to get together. I, I, I've said a whole bunch of things about the way that we need to change ourselves in, as artists. For one thing, we don't, you know, most artists don't even get paid enough, you know, to really, to really help anybody. You know, they barely get, they barely get money. They might be gold or whatever, but they, they still struggling. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, especially when they recoup and everything. How, how can you recoup everything from somebody and you, you, you know, you making more money than they are off their, off their product, off the, 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 the blood of their heart and their mind? You know, we need to, we need to empower ourselves even more. Now, we got some money, but like I said, when you, when you start recouping, you know, that money get low sometimes, and you know this too. So, so we got to, if we going to do it, then where is the pressure going to come from? Is the pressure going to come from me? Is the pressure going to come from you to put the pressure on these people to make them come and sit at a table and talk about what we can do? And then we've done that too. New Music Seminar, Jack the Rapper, How Can I Be Down? 
all, all everybody do is go to them damn seminars and get they party on. But they don't be talking public. about nothing. That's in the public. The right, point me, is that the deals are made behind closed doors without the cameras, and young people have to make more deals that have a political and financial impact uh, like we do with our business. Let me do this. Some people have been very patient on the phones, and maybe we can get you all to move from tonight to do something behind the scenes. Darnell in New Jersey, you're up. Yes, how you doing? Uh, Good. My name is Darnell. I'd just like to say I love hip-hop. And um, I wanted to make a statement on... Uh, hey, Darnell, I can't hear you. ...on letting everyone know about the things that you all are doing. I think that's good because everything else is glorified, like drugs, uh, jewelry, uh, all, all the evil things is glorified, and enough isn't glorified about what these artists are doing. Saying that y'all are doing this, you may hit some people... I understand what you're saying, Julio, but you may hit the young people that's not thinking about just money, money, money all the time. You may catch them at a young age and have them thinking that, yeah, these people are doing some negative, yeah. some, some positive things for their all people. Right. Darnell, thank you very much. X, uh, let's be honest, man. Yeah. If you did a bunch of this charity work, your record company would pull you up and say, well, wait a minute now. This isn't the image we want DMX to have. I mean, let's be honest about that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That, that really has nothing to do with my image. You know what I'm saying? My image comes from how I live. You know what I'm saying? How I walk, how I think, how I eat, who I, who I cross on the street every day. You know what I'm saying? Who I don't cross on the street. And for what reason, I don't cross the floor. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's where that comes from. That's, that's, this would change that. You know what I'm saying? That, that has nothing to do with my image. That's just something I do. You know what I'm saying? I don't go in there with a limo and an entourage about 30 people and cameras and all that. You know what I'm saying? I roll with me and maybe two other people. Come on, let's, let's knock this out. Sometimes I don't even have to roll. Just, you know what I'm saying? Make sure they got what they need. Chris, what about the idea that there was about a minute left, uh, what Sister Soldier is saying, the idea that maybe there needs to be even more done. Uh, how uh, amenable would you be uh, to, to trying to, to, to put that kind of thing together, or do you even think it would help? Well, uh, the first thing i got to say is that Soldier is absolutely right in terms of our communication. Uh, she knows that she's been reaching out to me uh, for years, and I, I don't really call a lot of people back. Uh, and I'm not using that as an excuse, but I will say that communication is key. But on the other side to that, trust, I think, is even more key than communication. And one of the reasons that I sort of say to myself is because I find that I can do more by myself than in a group of people. Uh, but I don't, you know, search the idea of communication. Soldier has, uh, I mean, the first time we, we started communicating, she had a concept about a black constitution, which in later years I was thinking further on about a hip-hop constitution uh, where we set the guidelines, we set the as, as to what's going to happen. But now, yeah. let, let, let us go back to this. I got, I gotta, I'm sorry, i got to stop you here because i, I got to sure. hit this break. Sure. I, I would encourage you all to make a phone call and reach out to each other, but i got to thank uh, Coolio and uh, KRS1 for, join, uh, for joining us from Los Angeles. DMX and Sister Soldier joining us here in our studios. I thank you. And we should note that there are good things happening in the world of hip-hop, and maybe this will be the catalyst for even more good things. We're going to take a break here when we return. Cheryl Martin has more news for you. BET Tonight returns right after